I've noticed that one of the things that gets people stuck when they're trying to build their business are the big questions like, what's my niche? Who's my ideal client? What should I be offering? What's my marketing message? What's my calling in life? These big questions have a finality to them that overwhelm us. And it is not helpful to be overwhelmed and to be afraid that if you don't answer the question correctly, you will go in the wrong direction. Have you ever experienced that? Oh, if I, if I pick the wrong niche, my God, I'm going to be wasting years of my life. <laughs> if I don't define my ideal client correctly, I'm going to be spending hours or thousands of dollars marketing to the wrong people. Well, of course you're going to delay if you're going to be scared by these big questions and have the sense of, oh, I got, I got to do all the research I can possibly do. And I got to, you know, spend months trying to figure this out before I can do the next thing. So the finality of these questions it's, is what is getting us stuck, some of us, and is also an illusion. So let me explain. When it comes to building an authentic business, what does it mean? It means that you are authentic and true, aligned with your evolution and your passions at this time. To build an authentic business doesn't mean, I'm gonna build a business for my authentic self 10 years from now. Who knows who you're gonna be 10 years from now? You don't know. And that's maybe one of the things that we forget is that we, we change in ways that we cannot predict, okay, number one. Number two, society changes in ways that we can't predict, okay? Number three is an interesting thought that a wise mentor of mine said to me years ago, and he said, we can't understand our calling except looking backward. Think about this. The calling of your life, your life mission, can only be understood looking backwards, not forwards. To think you're going to know your life mission for the rest of your life, you are preventing yourself from learning more because you have a certainty that you know what you're, what you're supposed to do for the rest of your life. Really? Does that mean you, you're, you're not going to learn anything else about yourself? I'm sorry. That's kind of boring life. I mean, you, no. You are, you are an infinitely adapting, evolving spirit being who has potentials beyond your imagination right now. So how can you tell me that you're going to define the rest of your life at this current time? I can't even define what you know, five years from now, I'm going to be doing, I, I, I am open-minded and I recommend that you stay open-minded too. Now I just did a video, you know, my last video is about being, you know, perceivers versus judges. And I said that I'm a, I'm a J, I'm a judger. So I like to make decisions and, you know, kind of no certainty and predictability, but this is the one thing that I'm a perceiver about. I'm a perceiver when it comes to what's my niche going to be in five years. What, who's my ideal client going to be? And I think the I don't know. What's my next offering? What's uh, what's my offering going to be in in twelve months? I haven't defined, and I'm I'm actually not going to define my course calendar for the next year because things can and will change based on what I understand of you, my audience, and what I understand is important for me to be teaching. Okay, so, and I think I am a I am open minded about these kinds of business questions because of my experience in business. My experience in business has taught me over 10 years that things change faster. Human beings, uh, you know, the, the kind of business I do is very human, human centric. It's about uh, human, human beings transmitting their wisdom and experience and support to one another. And human beings change faster than, than anything else. And society therefore, of course, changes fast too. So. Instead of being anxious and overwhelmed at figuring out what your niche is 
or what your offering is supposed to be or what your calling is supposed to be or who your ideal client is or what your marketing message is, let it go. Let it go. And instead, take this stance. Take the stance of experiment, playful experimentation, not definitions. There's a there's a wonderful old uh, Yiddish proverb that says, we plan, God laughs. We make plans and God says, oh, really? You think that's what's going to happen? You have no idea what's going to happen. You have no idea what you want to do even 12 months from now. You don't. I don't. Honestly, you think, oh, George, you have a very stable business. You know exactly your business coach. No, I, 12 months from now, I could be that I just decide, you know, I'm going to go full-time into doing productivity coaching. It depends on the response of my market. I'm always, always testing. Always. And that's, I think that's why I'm, I'm, I've been successful for so many years. Always testing. And same thing. I mean, Jeff Bezos, love, love him or hate him, you know, the founder of Amazon. Amazon, Jeff, they're always testing. Did you know this? Amazon.com. You think, well, they have a very stable business model. Every, you know, they sell this or this stuff. They're always, they have a, okay, I don't know. I'm, I don't want to uh, get, get this example wrong because they actually, it's already out there. But what I heard is they have, um, they give you time to like play and test. Google, same thing. They give Google employees time to test out new ideas, try new. They're always testing things out. Before they commit lots of money and time to something, they'll want to test it out first. And so what about you? Are you saying you have to define your niche? No, no. So, so, so instead of, and I'm looking at my notes here, make sure I'm, I'm sharing everything I need to with you. Oh yeah, there's a quote here I want to say from uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, you know, the wise, the wise Emerson says, all life is an experiment. The more experiments you make, the better. And in fact, the, 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 the sentence before this was, do not be too timid or squeamish about your actions. All of life is an experiment. The more experiments you make, the better. So how many experiments are you making? Or are you needing to figure it out and decide and then go out there with your offer and, and then finally publish your website and finally, you know, start your Facebook page? It's all, it's all up in the air. And with my new side business, I changed the business name three months in, into the start. It's okay. And now I've got the, the, the new business name has been going on for three months and who knows, I might still change it. That's how I succeed. Not just me, but that's how most successful entrepreneurs succeed. They are open to change all the time. Niche, change. Ideal audience, ideal client, change. Depends on how the response is, you see. So don't define. Be open to change. Okay, so... Let me give you a couple of reframings about these things. So instead of what's my niche, okay, don't, if what's my niche isn't helpful for, I mean, for some of you, you like asking the bigger questions. Sometimes, sometimes it's inspiring to ask the bigger questions. The, what's my niche? What's my calling? What's my, who's my ideal client? What's my marketing message? These are big questions. Sometimes if it helps you, great, do it. But if any time you notice, ooh, it might be making me procrastinate on finally making a decision on what the th next thing I'm going to promote is, okay? Then don't ask what's my niche. Ask this, what's the next niche that I want to explore through experimentation? Maybe I explore it for one month. Who cares what my Aunt Sally says, uh, what, what my old classmate John says, oh, you change your niche again? I don't give a F about what, my old classmate John says, or Aunt Sally, neither of which I actually have. But, but you know what I mean is, are, uh, that I really should uh, uh, really address this. It may be that you're being stopped because you're afraid of some, some family member or some old classmate or some friend saying, well, you changed again? You, you, you I thought you were doing this, now you're doing that? Okay, first of all, you know, have compassion. They are not entrepreneurs. That's why they're saying that. An entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur particularly, would be like, oh, that's great. You changed niches. Awesome. So did you get some market response that, oh, okay, yeah, so great. Well, I hope you'll keep changing until you find the market response that's right. 
that that is the Venn diagram, the c intersection between your deep gladness and the world's deep wants or the world's gr hunger, okay, that takes continual experimentation, says the successful entrepreneur. Okay, not your Aunt Sally or your classmate John or your you know um, your, your your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or your fill in the blank your cousin. Their opinion, unless they're a successful entrepreneur, unless several successful entrepreneurs have said, why are you, now, now, you don't want to change niches every, like, week. That's a little weird, but change niches every, every month. Every single month, try a new niche. I challenge you to do that. Who cares what your, you know, wife and mother and brother and dad and classmate and who, who cares what they say? That, you need to first, that's the, that's actually the foundation. You need to stop caring what they say you need to have compassion on them and you go laugh and go yeah you know that's what entrepreneurs do show them this video tell them george says not to listen to your non-business experience you don't have business experience and they have business experience it's in the corporate world which is very like a titanic right except for the most successful corporations keep changing right amazon keep changing new they're trying new stuff they're always trying new stuff you know uh tesla all, trying new stuff. Hey, what if we dig a hole under LA? They've now dug a hole under LA. Let's give it a try, says Elon Musk. Let the Elon Musk and the Jeff Bezos be your advisor, not your 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 Aunt Sally or your cousin Bob, who's criticizing you. You know, when you go see them for for family for family gathering in a couple weeks. You know, we're recording this during the holidays, right? Just say, oh, you know, that's actually what entrepreneurs do. If you knew the, if you understood the, the definition of entrepreneurship, right, then you know that George says to change niches every month. Now, I, I'm being facetious a little bit. I mean, I'm not literally saying you should change niches every month. But if you haven't figured it out, if you're not yet making money, probably you should change niches every month. Try it out. I want you to try 12 different niches before you have a clue, you know, before you get a sense of, Okay, it looks like the world wants me to do this. Looks like I really like doing this. Try 12 different things. Don't just try one thing. Don't just try two or three things. Okay? Don't. I mean, that's why, that's, and the, you know what the easiest way to try niches is? Content. So instead of like, George, are you saying create 12 different websites? That would be the most inefficient way of trying a niche. The easiest way of trying a niche is today I'm going to write about relationships. Tomorrow I'm going to write about career. The far, following day I'm going to write about money. The following day I'm going to write about energy, energy healing. The following day I'm going to write about knitting. The following day I'm going to make a video about dog training because I'm just trying all these things out. And I'm going to see which one I really enjoy and which one now maybe you don't do one a day, right? Maybe you try knitting for a week or, or like I said, a month. Given like you're really passionate about knitting, great. Make, make a, a, a video a day about knitting for a month. See how that goes. See, see if you really like it. See what the markets, your, your, you, know, your, you know, you do Facebook ads if you can. Try it out. The next, the next month, you're going to try dog training because you have a passion for that too. Try it out. Try, if you don't try, how will you know? It might be that the eighth thing you try is like you, your life, your business takes off. I mean, you just, that is going to be the thing you do for the next 10 years. But you never got to the eighth thing. You never tried it. You never tried it. So try through content and Facebook ads. Okay. F content posts on your Facebook business, start a Facebook business page. Start posting content there, run Facebook ads, see if the odd, you know, the, even the cold people don't know you yet. They like your writings or they like your videos or whatever. Try writings first, but try videos too. Um, try it through content. You can start 12 secret Facebook pages. Your Aunt Sally and, and Uncle Bob don't need to know that you have these Facebook pages. Just like I have my secret test, my secret, you know, spiritual business right now. I'm just trying it out. I have two hours a week to try things out. And so I'm probably going to, you know, I'm, 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 I should probably be trying more things, to be honest, but I'm only trying one thing right now, actually. Maybe I should follow my own advice and show you what it's like to try 12 different things, but I'm trying one thing because I, I have enough business experience where I feel like, okay, I think I can build a business from there, but 
spiritual personal development is so broad that I could I could offer 12 different things next year you know very different things within that spiritual personal growth space you know there's a lot of experimentation available there for, for me to try but that's the idea instead of what's my niche right you could say what's my overall topic my overall topic is relationships great relationships all right there could be 12 different things you try it could be you know marriage coaching divorce coaching dating coaching could be you know relationships at work could be really lots of different things so instead of what's my niche say what's the next little thing that i want to explore through experimentation content or through offers um okay and okay who's my ideal audience that's the next thing i want to uh, myth bust here stop saying who's my ideal audience i mean you can if you if it help if it's helpful great but for a lot of people that I work with, like they're so stuck on who's my ideal client. No. Instead, I like to ask, okay, who has recently been responding to my authentic content? Who has recently been responding to my authentic content? Then you're not guessing who's my ideal audience, who's my ideal client, like fantasy, who knows? I'm just defined, I'm just guessing. Is it me from 10 years ago? Is it my best friend? Is it my mom? Is it my my you know nephew who, who's my ideal client who, who's going to answer that for you right the market will answer that for you the market answers that question for you not your own journaling not your own well i think it might be this no the market answers well so how does the market answer well you're putting content out there and then you're seeing well who's responding to my content to my authentic content me being myself who is going to like me for who i am Plenty of people, plenty of people, millions of people will like you for who you am. Remember this. Remember that just advertising to, to, on Facebook, advertising to United States and Canada is something like 300 million people. 300 million people that you could reach through Facebook ads in just the U.S. and Canada. I'm not even talking United Kingdom and you know, Australia and you know, Singapore and Ireland, South Africa, you know, whatever. Fill in the blank. Europe, Asia, you know, Antarctica. <laughs> Just U.S. and Canada, which is what I'm focused on right now. India, oh my God, you know, China. I mean, just focus U.S. and Canada. 300, 300 million people you can reach on Facebook ads. There are, U.S. and Canada, there are probably 10,000, 100,000 people who are literally would love you just for who you are, even without the makeup even when you stumble. 100,000 people out of 300 million. I mean, that's, what is it? 1% of 300 million is 3 million, okay? 1% of that, okay, 300,000, 30,000. Okay, let's say 30,000 people. 1% 1 of 1% 1 of, the, of the US and Canada population love you for who you are. That's not, that's not, uh, that's not unlikely, actually, right? 30,000, there are 30,000 people out there, just in, just in US Canada, who love you for who you are. Like, you don't have to try to be anything. You can be crazy, you can be funny, you can be boring. Doesn't matter what you do, they love you for who you are. Just, just showing up as you, just love you. So, who is it that's been responding to my authentic content? Ask that question. Don't ask who's my ideal audience. Also ask, who has been buying my services and, and products? If you've I've got any buyers if you don't have it who's been responding and if you don't have any responses yet you haven't gotten your thing in front of enough people remember one percent of one percent right so that's like um help me do the math here it's a hundred one out of ten thousand people love you for who you are who are on facebook that you reach through ads one out of ten so have you even reached ten thousand people yet in your facebook ads maybe you've reached a, you could reach about a thousand people for under twenty dollars so for two hundred dollars so for $200, you'll probably find that one person who loves you for who you are. And then they'll keep following your content. Just keep, you know, and I'm, I'm being, that's kind of conservative. For 200 bucks, you'll probably find 10, 20 people who just are going to keep following you ongoingly. Who knows? I don't know what the numbers are for you are going to be. You're probably more attractive than me. <laughs> I say it a lot of times. I'm blessed with below average looks because that allows me to be able to share this message with everybody. Um, so. You're more attractive than me. 
you're, you're, it's going to be more than one out of 10,000. It's going to be one out of a thousand for you, or maybe even one out of a hundred. Okay. So don't worry about your ideal audience. Just put your stuff out there. See who responds to you naturally. Okay. Um, the next one is what should my offering be? What should my offering be? That is such an intimidating question. Instead of asking, what should my offering, what should my product or my service be? Ask this, what have I already been helping people with? Okay, that's a good, that's a good question to ask. You look at, remember, our calling can only be understood looking backward, right? Looking backward. Uh, let me just um, take a moment to thank those of you who are joining me here. Yule, Elena, Mona, Sharon, Alejandra, Jace, Linda. Thanks so much for joining me. Wendy, Jen. Um, so... Our calling can only be understood looking backward. Looking forward, it's all guesses, and you should be guessing the next thing, not guessing what you should be for the rest of your life, okay? So instead of what should my product be, too big of a question, too intimidating, what have I already been helping people with? So that's some clues. Oh, I've already been helping people with this. I love reading about that. I, already, I love talking to people about that, helping them with that. Great. What will I try helping people with next? What's the next thing I'm going to try helping people with? Give it, let's give it a try. Dog training, let's try helping people with that. Cat training, let's try. Turtle training, let's help people with that. <laughs> you know? um, knitting, I'm just thinking of random examples. Um, I don't know. Uh, designing furniture, let's try it. Let's try it. If I've been passionate about it, if I'm reading about it, I've been watching videos, let me try becoming a des furniture design expert. I could create a secret Facebook page, Uncle Bob, Uncle, you know, Uncle, Uncle Bob, Uncle Sally, Aunt Bob. I'm being progressive here. Uh, we'll never have to know about it, okay? Never have to know. They don't have to criticize you. It's a secret page. You're using Facebook ads. Try out new, new people who've never heard of you. Now you're a furniture, you're a furniture expert in, in, in this Facebook page, and you are a meditation teacher on this Facebook page, and you are a painter on that third Facebook page, and you are a dog bed designer on this fourth. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you try things out, you will have, give, your chance, give yourself the best chance of success. So um, anyway, I guess I'll, I'll finish up this video by just uh, thanking those of you. So um, the, last thing, the last thing I'll say, actually, as I'm looking at my notes here, is instead of trying to make a decision, try things until the decision becomes obvious. Let me say that again. Instead of trying to answer the big question, try lots of little questions, try lots of little things until the big question becomes, the answer to the big question becomes obvious. It will become obvious to you at some point. You will not have to wonder what's my calling at some point. You'll be like, well, obviously my calling has been to be a furniture designer because that's what I've been doing now for the last 10 years successfully. People have been appreciating me for it. it. It will become obvious to you who your ideal audience is. So if it's not obvious to you, you're not ready to define it. It will become obvious to you what your niche is. If it's not obvious yet, you're not ready yet to define it. You need to try more things it will become blazingly obvious to you. Because you'll be like, well, look, lots of people keep asking me about this. It's obviously my niche, right? Um, okay, so, um, and one other thought is that your information becomes more updated as you live into the future, right? You, in 2030, is gonna understand the 2030 society and the 2030 you better than you in 2019. You in 2019 can barely guess what you in 2030 is gonna be or what society is gonna be like. So why are you making your decision for 2030? You should be making your decision for the second quarter of 2019, maybe. You see what I mean? So, all right, um, thanks for being here. I hope this has been helpful. Um, let's, let me just take a look at some of the comments here. Mona says, how do you create a secret Facebook page? Go to facebook.com slash pages, I think. Facebook.com slash uh, pages. Let me see if that's the, yeah. Um, yeah, facebook.com slash pages. Click on create page, okay? And don't like the page. That's how you create a secret page. You just create the page, but you don't like, you, Mona, don't like the page, because if you start liking the page, your friends and family know that you, you like that page. 
So just don't like that page and don't like any of your posts. Then it's secret. Nobody else, nobody will know. Because there's a, how, what, millions at least, if not hundreds of millions of Facebook pages out there. So how does anyone not know that you've, one's been created? One's probably created every hour or every 10 minutes, probably a, a new Facebook page is created. So I hope that helps. Um, all right, so let's see here. Great. All right, <laughs> thanks, Elena, for your comment. Thanks, Yule, and Sharon, Alejandra, Jace. Well, um, I hope this is helpful, and any questions, comment below, and I will see you in the next video. Remember, keep experimenting secretly. If you're shy about your friends and family thinking that you're a flake, I don't care that my friends and family think I'm a flake, but maybe you do. Um, you know, then create secret pages and use Facebook ads to try different audiences. Um, okay, or or if you don't mind, then just try different content on your own page, and uh, you don't have to promote that to your friends and family. Right? Just let your audience test out what they like from you. All right. Be well. I will see you again soon.